very often when we're analyzing information we are looking at sums and averages and so on. Sometimes though we want to look at distinct counting. In this model which is sales orientated we have a sales measure in last year's sales and you know a lot of sales oriented things. We might also want to count up the uh, number of units that contributed to those sales but other kinds of counts may want to be distinct like how many distinct customers contributed toward the sales number or how many distinct products. So we're going to look at how to do some product counting this time and it would apply equally well to counting customers or, or other things that should be counted distinctly. I'm going to add a measure here and it doesn't matter where which cell I add this measure to but I'll just put it right here. And this measure is going to be called distinct products. My distinct products is going to use a function just called distinct count. And the column name is going to be product key. The distinct count function is fairly straightforward and easy to use. It simply returns the number of unique values in the list that we passed to it. So we've passed it the product key column and it will just scan the product key column uh, sort it out, figure out how many distinct products it finds. In the entire table of all years and all products and all sales, it found 2,516. Now, the context of the query that it's showing us right now is everything. If we wanted to see how we might really use that, we could go into Excel and query that in a pivot table. So here are my sales and my distinct products is there. There's that same number. 2516. But if I break that down perhaps by, uh, well, let's use the store table. We don't often use it. Well, let's choose the store name. What it now tells me is, you know, the context has changed. So the context of this row is this particular store and it is 2516. It sold every product, but this store has only sold 1965. So uh, we are getting a slice of that. Then if we take that one step further and insert a slicer, and let's do that on the calendar year. There we go. So now we can look at that distinct count for just one year at a time. So the Amsterdam store, 955 for that year, 1200 for that year. But what we've kind of lost is the total number of unique items that store has ever sold and we'd like to get that back so let's look at a little different calculation to do that and this calculation is more complicated so we're gonna write it look at it and then explain it and this is gonna be called distinct products all years and here we'll use that calculate function again because we want to change the context so whenever we want to change the context of a calculation we're very often thinking, oh, I probably need to calculate to do that. And this is going to use a function called count rows, distinct, and don't worry too much if this seems a little foreign because there's a lot going on here, but we'll explain it and then it will be super easy for you to get. Okay, so that's that calculation. Distinct product, all years, and in this context, the entire table, these two numbers are exactly the same. But if we go back to Excel, and refresh our data and then add this new calculation we'll see that we have a new measure that isn't being limited anymore by the rows in fact if we select all years we'll get the same number on both measures because we're including all years but if we drill down and just look at one year we're now getting the distinct products for that year but also the distinct products for all years and that's because we changed the context. So let's look at this calculation one step at a time so that it makes a lot of sense and I, I guarantee that after we go through this it will seem very simple to you. So the outermost function that we're calling is calculate and calculate is a command that says calculate something using a modified context. In other words calculate something with a different set of filters than what you normally would and in this spreadsheet the context that we have is the store name and the year is selected so the calculate is 
going to change something about that. The companion to calculate is the argument after the first one. So the second and, and further we could have more. But the second argument is the modification to the context. And that modification is all date date key, which essentially says clear the date filter, but only for this calculation. So in other words, remove that slicer from this calculation. Then within we have this function count rows. And count rows says I'm going to give you a table and tell me how many rows are in it. The table that we give to count rows is distinct sales product key. So we're giving count rows a distinct list of product keys after the date key has been removed. And that's why it returns this distinct count of products in all years. So this is a very useful kind of a technique to use when you want to control exactly how you're counting things and you still want distinct counts which we we have in both cases but the difference between the two is the calculate is being used to modify the context so that we're counting only along certain filters but leaving some off